Welcome back to the Video Science Club. Today we have a very special episode where we will be answering questions from the viewers. Our first question is from a viewer called Jenny. How does videotape store pictures and sounds? Well, that is an excellent question, Jenny, and I would be delighted to answer that for you. Consider this uh, humble VCR and consider the cassette tapes that go inside it. Consider the humble tape, audio cassette, video cassette tape, the science of both regardless of whether it is pictures or audio is the same if we were to take an illustration if we were to make a quick illustration of the surface of a videotape on top of the tape or inside of the tape is metal oxide let's just call it rust and on a blank tape or a tape that has been erased erased the polarization of the rust is randomized there is no distinct pattern to it. So it looks like that. Now, with a magnetic writing head, we essentially take the randomized particles of metal oxide and create a pattern. Now, obviously this is a very basic illustration, but as the magnetic recording head passes over the metal oxide, it can start to create interesting patterns. It will align the molecules in a way, and there are so many of them, that they can create pictures interpreted by this type of machine. Now, thankfully, Cassette tapes contain a significant number of these particles which allows us to create very high resolution images even on a domestic recorder. As I said, as I said, this is obviously a very basic illustration of the idea. Um, and separately on video cassettes there is a separate track for audio and a control track which contains the time, the current time, otherwise this stuff doesn't know where it's going to be in the linear position of a cassette tape. Now, as I said, this is obviously a very basic illustration of this technology. You can read more about this in your Video Science Club booklet. The latest version contains extra information. The next question we have is from a viewer called Susan. Why do I get interference on my TV and tapes sometimes? That is another excellent question. 
Um, let's see. Interference can occur for a number of reasons. It could be atmospheric. There could be natural obstacles. If dealing with a cassette tape, interference is often caused by a magnet or in a degradation of the tape itself. There is a magnet inside here, right here. This is the array's head. And it, as I explained before, randomizes those particles. Randomizing it wipes it during broadcast video signals. Especially terrestrial interference can occur for a variety of reasons, such as weather, natural obstacles such as mountains, or if there is another signal being broadcast on the same frequency, it can essentially infiltrate the original signal, where the signals could be from an unknown origin. Bria asks, what does the future hold for video? Another excellent question. Um, so, as the technology continues to rapidly develop, we need to consider that we do not just look at these cassette tapes and broadcast video as simple pictures and sound, but instead we should see them as information and data. So, we know that we can capture a great deal more than just pictures and sound in these radio waves that we broadcast all over the world and even into space. Let me illustrate, for example, what I see is the future. Right now, we have radio waves as amplitude modulation. We have radio waves as frequency modulation. That's AM and FM. These can be interfered with quite significantly if the weather decides to do so or if a stray signal decides to do so. And this will often, as you have surely seen manifest itself on your television set or on your radio as hiss or snow. The future of video is digital. A digital signal is very different in that you can use the same type of radio waves, slightly different, to broadcast ones and zeros. Now, that looks very straightforward. This will construct, perhaps, at the frame, an interlaced frame, may be a couple of bits of audio data. And if weather, if weather or a stray signal decided to interfere with this, you could lose a chunk. But it wouldn't get snowy and it wouldn't hiss. Because even if you degrade a one or a zero, the receiver still knows that it's a one or a zero. Hence, the strength of digital transmission. Digital transmission is the future. We will see less interference with our signals and it will stop interfering with our viewing pleasure. If by chance in the future when you have digital video 
the interference may manifest itself quite differently. You may see strange artifacting, perhaps a hand or a face will shift and move in an unnatural way. This is often an indication that a foreign, foreign signal has in live broadcasts we will actually be able to receive and store not just on tape but in a multitude of different kinds of devices playback and watch whenever we want to it won't just contain video and pictures but also identification data and other data that allows you allows people to see what you're it's a very exciting uh, future essentially what will happen is we will not just watch it live we will download the information and keep it and it won't degrade, degrade. The future of video really is very, very exciting. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Video Science Club and we hope to see you next time.